Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a really simple AI automation that both classifies and responds to all the emails that flow into your inbox based on the parameters that you give it. I'm going to both show you how to set up the prompts that allow us to classify the emails, and I'm going to show you the system prompts that allow the AI to actually respond in a way that sounds like us. That way it's not super obvious that it's just AI generating all of these drafts. Now, while this is a super simple automation, I actually think it brings a ton of value. We spend way too much time both looking through our emails and trying to come up with responses. And something like this is able to drive a ton of value without a lot of work when it comes to the setup. I personally sold a number of these to different clients and everyone has loved it. So let's dive in and start building this thing from scratch. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is we need to set up a Gmail trigger. Now, if you haven't set up your Gmail accounts before, just check out the previous videos where I break down how to go to Google Cloud and set that all up. But we're going to do the one trigger that's available to us, and that's on message receive. So here we are inside the Gmail trigger. You'll see we have a few options. How often do you want it to pull the emails? We're just going to do every minute. The event's going to be message received. And then we're going to make sure this is unclicked. We don't want it to be simplified. We want to be able to grab all the data at once. And then you have the options to add filters based on like sender or red status and all that. And then you can even have it download the actual attachments if you want to as well. But what I want you to do for this is I want you to go inside your own email and then send yourself some sort of test message. For this one, I'm gonna pretend I'm a client who's trying to get some information about Chase AI, right? This is a potential lead and I'm gonna classify my emails based on emails that are possible leads and those that aren't. So once you send that email, just hit fetch test event and you should see all this stuff pop up on the right. You're just gonna come up here to the right-hand side and we're gonna pin that data so we can maps up and mess around with it later. All right, so now we have the trigger. We've grabbed that new email. Now we wanna actually classify it. So we're gonna search for text classifier. And here we're gonna map what we actually wanna classify. What we wanna classify is gonna be based off of the actual text. So if you come down here to the left, you'll see text, right? We're just going to map that in there. And then you'll see the actual message. Hey, I was interested in buying an AI agent that can handle all my emails. What would the next steps be? And so we're going to keep it simple in this demo, and we're just going to have two categories. So the first category will be Chase AI Leads. And then down here on Options, we're going to put when no clear match. We don't want it to discard the email. We're just going to have it output to an other branch. So for the Chase AI Leads description, we're just going to put something along the lines of, hey, any email that seems like it's a potential lead for our company, you're going to categorize this way. And so you'll see what I wrote was emails that are potential Chase AI leads. If the email asks about pricing, AI implementation, or just wants more AI info, route them here. And so let's test this step and see which it does. Oh, all right. We actually need to attach a model on this one. Forgot about that. So back out of here and go to model. And down here on the right-hand side, we are just going to use OpenAI. Again, check out some of the previous videos that go in depth of how to actually connect your account. And if that's too confusing, just come up here to the docs. It'll do step-by-step -step instructions of how to get your GPT account all set up. So we're gonna use 4.1 mini for this. You really shouldn't be using 4.0 anymore. 4.1 is much better. Now that it's connected, let's test this again. And we'll see, hey, put it in the correct branch. So now we have two branches here, right? We have Chase AI and Other. So for Other, we just are gonna have it do nothing, right? Like, I don't wanna delete it. I don't even wanna like, label it because I have no, this could be anything. So we're just going to have it do nothing, right? And then the Chase AI leads, now that we've classified it, I probably also want to tag it, right? Just kind of good organizational practice. So what we're going to do here, we'll search for Gmail again, and we're going to go to label, 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 add label to message. So message ID, right? It's just going to be this ID up here. And then label whatever you have. You could go inside Gmail and create a new label. For this, we'll just do important. And you can test that step as well. Now we can see it's unread, important, sent in in the inbox. Okay, so now that we have our email, what do we want to do next? Well, now we want to send it to AI so it can actually draft a response based on the parameters and the rules we give it. So to do that, we're just going to do a basic LLM chain. Okay, so once you're in here, Source for prompt is going to be defined below because we want the prompt to be the actual message that was in the email. So if you go to text classifier and you come down to the actual text, so again, right here, put it in here, boom. Now here comes the important part and that's going to be the system prompt. This is where we're going to say like, hey, these are the types of emails you're getting. Here's how I want you to respond. 
based on this logic. So what I want you to do is kind of just type that out in some form, and it's probably going to be very simple. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to AI ourselves. In my case, I love to use Gemini, and we're going to say, hey, this is the pitiful system prompt I came up with to start. Here's what I'm trying to do with it. Help me out here. So for my system message, I'm going to say something like, uh, you are responding as if you're Chase AI, and these emails are for potential leads, and I want you to sign up this way and respond this way. Okay, so here's what I ended up writing. I'll blow this up. I said, the prompt is a user email from a potential lead for Chase AI. You will respond as if you are from Chase AI answering the user's questions. Below are some FAQs that you can use to respond to the emails. And so the FAQs I wrote, all AI agents cost $1 million and all email AI agents take six months to create. And then I also wrote, um, always be professional and concise. And then I even said, sign off all emails with thanks or so, so much for talking to us. That's great English. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for talking to us. So that's what I wrote. Obviously that kind of gets it, the job done, but we can do better than that. So once you have your own thing right now, just copy it and then hop into your AI of choice. Okay, so here I am in Gemini, my AI of choice. I love Gemini 2.5. I think it's the best for NNN stuff. But the real point in here is take that system prompt you created, paste it into here, and then say something like this, like, hey, this is my system prompt. I need some help with it. It's for an AI agent in NNN that takes emails for potential leads and responds to them accordingly. Here's what I got. So let's run this, and then let's see what it actually gives us back. Okay, so here's what it gave us back. You can see here, this is the improved system prompt here in kind of like the blue coded area, way more in depth. And it even breaks it out into like Q and A's to give examples of actual frequently asked questions. And even as a part where it says, hey, add more FAQs here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy paste this in there. So copy this guy, go back into your workflow and we're just gonna replace this. Now. Understand you don't have to do this exactly like the AI tells you, right? So what I did is I said, hey, be concise, be professional, here are some FAQs, but you can go a lot more in depth. If you have examples of your own writing, hey, this is how I write my emails, this is how I this is how I sign off, right? Some stuff specific to you, put it in the system prompt, right? This is where you customize it. And so it doesn't make it obvious that Chat GPT is responding to these emails, right? You want it to sound like you. So once you do that, we're just gonna test the step. And again, I didn't put the model in there. That's two for two now. Um, so this one, again, we're just going to use 4.1 mini. And here we go, 4.1 mini. And let's try it again. So test the step. And let's see the output we get. So these are the logs. This is where you can kind of see how it goes through the process. But the output says, Thanks for reaching out with your interest in our AI email agents. Our AI agents can be customized to handle your emails efficiently, tailored to your specific needs. Right, next step would be to schedule a consultation, et cetera, et cetera. Would you be open to a quick call? And then thanks so, so much for talking to us for the sign off. So there we go, not bad. It followed the directions we gave it. And so now the next step would be actually sending that email off. Now you have two options. You can either actually do a Gmail node that sends the email if you trust the AI is gonna do it correctly every single time. Or like many people, you kind of want it to be a draft, right? You want to get one final once over before you send something off with your name on it. So we're going to do the draft. And so we're going to go to draft actions, create a draft. And now we just got to map some stuff. So what do we want to do for the subject? Well, we know it's a reply. So we're just going to do RE space. And then we want to find the original Gmail subject. And it should be back here on the Gmail trigger looking for the subject, looking for the subject. Where are you? Here it is. Okay, there it is, found it. All right, so, so now we have like a reply and the actual subject. Next email type, we're gonna keep it as text for now. You can get fancy and do HTML and do like cool formatting if you want to. Um, you would just need to prompt the AI in the previous section, the system prompt to be like, hey, I want the output to be HTML. And then for the message, we're just gonna go to that basic LLM chain and map this text into here. And you'll see it actually like formats, it does the high, all that stuff. Now, the last thing we need to do, and this is important for the um, drafts especially, is the thread ID. Because when I respond to you and we have a back and forth email and there's 10 emails, that's all inside a single thread. And so when I do the draft, I want it to still be sitting in that thread. So when I go into my Gmail, I can just hit reply, 
and be done. If you don't put a thread ID here, it's just gonna be stuck inside your drafts folder, just kind of sitting in you know the void, and we wanna avoid that. So thread ID, same thing as before, go to text classifier, go to wherever. Thread ID should be right at the top, put that in there, and now let's test the step. All right, said it did it, and so let me go check my Gmail and see if it actually populated. Okay, so here I am inside my email, and this is the draft it had ready to go, right? It says, hi, thanks for reaching out, blah, 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 blah. And if I like this, I could just hit send and be done, right? I didn't have to sit there and read the email and draft the whole response. This actually could have saved me a lot of time, especially at scale. So just like that, in what, less than 10 minutes, you've created an AI workflow that can take a look at all your emails, classify them, label them, do a response in your voice based on your parameters, and then create a draft ready for you to review. That easy. Now, how can we make this better? How can we improve on it? There's actually a lot of things we can do, right? And so we just have this broken up into two sections, right? We have the leads and then we have other, but obviously there's other sorts of emails, right? What if I wanted to break this out further? What if I wanted to break out the leads further? I wanted like high priority leads or low priority leads. How could I continue to do that? Well, that'd be pretty easy. You would just go into the text classifier here and we would just add another category, right? This category could be, you know, high priority KTI leads. And then what would I do here? Well, I would just do the high priority description, right? And I'd go into detail about what makes something high priority based on the email. And then from there, always make sure you have these properly mapped. I would just go through the same process, right? I could even copy paste this to get me started. And then I would probably have a different label. I could call this high priority right here. I would make that inside of Gmail. And then I'd go inside here and I would just edit the system prompt. How do I want the high priority emails to be responded to? Do I want something different to be happening, right? It'd be different logic in each of these blocks. And now if you want to get even more advanced, right, we could do something like hook this up to a RAG system. Now this isn't a, you know, RAG lesson. I have other videos on that if you want to take a look. But we could have like a single source of truth for all of our frequently asked questions all of our contacts, all that sorts of thing that all of these models are able to reference, right? So you can actually get pretty complicated and sophisticated with these sort of like email classifying and responder AI agents, right? We could even start adding stuff like a Gmail calendar, you know, module that then, hey, once we know they want to like have a meeting or set up a call, automatically do that. So you can really go down the rabbit hole with these kinds of things, but this video was just sort of giving you the taste of that. So you can kind of see how much value can be derived from an AI automation that really took, you know, if you speed run this three, four minutes. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about this one as always. Uh, hope you can actually start implementing yourself. Cause I think this is actually one of the really cool ones. I always like doing this. And like I said, I've sold essentially this exact AI agent, this AI automation really to multiple clients. So there's real value out there for this particular one. So um, good luck creating this and I'll see you guys around.